So I've created a lot of life management tools in Notion on this channel, from task managers to knowledge capture systems. But by far the most requested idea this year has been a Notion budgeting template. Well, here we go. Let's take a tour of my new Notion financial tracker. This is how to budget in Notion. Yes. One of the big challenges that we all face is budgeting our money effectively. These days, many of us find ourselves maybe living from multiple income sources or having our work circumstances challenged in 2021. That has been a thing. So let's break down right now how I'm using Notion to uh, track my income and expenditure using this template that automates and simplifies your finances. The template is available to download, in fact, right now on the website. And as always, in a coming video, I'll also take you through step by step how to build the essentials of the system we're going to tour in this video. System overview, databases and a filtered dashboard. So at its heart, this system is essentially a set of three linked databases, an income database, an expenses database, and then a balance database that reports on the year feeding from the two. These feed into a filtered dashboard view that can then be used to track and manage your finances month by month. Monthly income is really simple to, to drop something new in. You just click a new thing, uh, it will have filtered it by the year and by the month and you can just type it all in. If I wanted to now kind of move on to say example the month that we're in, all I need to do is click on the filter and change the filter to the month. It will clear everything from the previous months and then anything I knew I put in will be June. Brilliant. Now I've even created a mechanism that allows you to create template income and expenditure items that are then easily generated and added into the system each month. That I think is the coolest thing, so hang around and see that later in the video. Now the numbers are essentially fed into the balance database using the roll-up function in Notion. So it calculates from those other two databases and from there um, you have a view of essentially your profit and loss and a couple of other things. Now I've designed this so that it can be used either as an overall personal budgeting tool or as I'm using it to actually track the income and expenditure of a business. Or for example, if you're a, a freelancer, uh, this is a great way to do your accounts. If you're in the UK, in fact, you could use this to tally your expenses for self-assessment. I have a setup guide for the template which shows you how to use it um, if you were to just want to download this straight away. Um, but also reminds me because I've just made it. This is pretty cool. Over here I have a um, an Indify widget which is a countdown. So you can make a countdown for anything. You set the date. So I've just created a, a widget that says how long is left in the financial year. Balance reports and accounts history. Uh, this is the year so far. It's filtered just by the current year, um, the item in here, and it will give me my report. If we go into the main system, the great thing about this full view is it gives me all of the history of everything, right? So I've not got loads in this because it's my example, but you can see, for example, there that um, I've added a little thing for June. Um, so this would just list everything in the financial year order and in the uh, month order for expenses and the same for income and the same for balances. I've set this up so I've got year by year reports. Currently there's only one because we haven't created more so I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, and of course we have a system view and you can see how it works. We've got these two hidden spaces which are essentially the thing that links the database back to the other two which allows me to basically every time I put something into income or expenditure for it to be rolled up into these views. So this is the balance report for the year. It's filtered by the year that we're in um, and it will show me my total income, it will show me my total expenditure, um, just completely plain. But then I've got this system in expenses, which I'll show you in a moment, which allows me to pick a percentage of claimed income. Uh, if you are self-employed, you might want to claim 20% of your house bills against your work. It's a way of working that into the system. More on that later on. Setting up the new financial year. Okay, so if I want to set up a new year in this system, I'm really proud of how this works because it properly minimizes keeping everything in one place and viewing it in the way you want to. So if I go into the main system view, all I need to do is this. What I've done is now created a new year. I just add something new and put it in. You'll see nothing is linked to it. It's just blank. Then we need to add a financial year tag to the income and expenditure that will link to that. I've already done it, but if I click on here, 
you just create one by going to uh, either putting a new box in and putting it in or going to configure options in this main system. Do the same here, so it's the same color and it corresponds. And then that's all set up, ready to go. In order to use this for that reason, it's really simple. Let me show you how quick this is. One, filter by the new year. Copy the details from here, paste them into here. Done. Down to this one, filter by the new year and the relevant balance sheet. Filter again by the new year and by the relevant balance sheet. And you literally have a clean new year to start from. The great thing is, is for example, if I generate an example uh, new monthly expenditure using the template button, I'll show you that in a moment, I can just drop that in. If you notice, it's already populated as April, but let's just double check it if we go back to this page, you'll also see uh, that April and the year have turned up. You can see that the order, that was the previous year, and then it would start with the next one and go through the months. Simple as that. So let me show you income. My income database tour. This is a filtered view that will only be for the current month. I know it only says uh, April on here because I've set it to April because it's where the financial year starts. Every time I add something, it will keep it in the current year and the current month. When I finished with the month, I simply filter onto the next one and then the next thing you add in will always be uh, the right month. And if we just go into the main systems, if I click on here, there is like a system view, which is all the programming. So I have a description of the item, which you can see is a list of months. Uh, you put the amount, you can select uh, an income type, um, I don't have a salary, but it's there as an example uh, in the template. And then all of these are examples of things that you might have. Um, you can add your own. Um, the company or client, so then you'd be able to view by company or client that you've been paid by. And then this is essentially how um, it links to the reports. So the financial year, you can add financial year, and then that's relating to the, uh, the database of the report for the year. And I've got a date added because that helps elsewhere if you want to look at the history of all of your expenses, for example, um, view by client, it will then allow you to um, view the historic payments you've had from a specific client on that. And obviously you could set your own, own views up. Expenditure and expenses. There's quite a lot going on in here. If I click on the actual system view, I have um, quite a lot of different setups. I can see all expenses, I can view by expense type, by fixed expense, variable expense, and one-off expense. There are reasons for all of those, I'll get to them. And then a system view, that just shows you all of the programming that's in there. There's quite a bit in order to give me this status view. I love What I love about it is it will tell you if it's a one-off expense, whether it's something that you've budgeted for and is on budget, or whether it's something you've budgeted for and is overspent, which is pretty cool, you can see in the examples here. Financial year that links it to everything else, the month, of course, um, the description, the amount, the expense type, so you can group it by like bills or equipment. If you're doing a kind of self-assessment return, say as a freelancer, you need to go, I spent this on equipment, this on travel, that's pretty cool. I've got fixed variable or one-off because it allows me to um, kind of generate and manage fixed uh, amounts that I can just drop in every time. I'll show you in a bit. Variable is stuff that's regular, but that I want to budget for. So I can set a budget here. And if, for example, here I've got, I've, the actual amount for the month was over the budgeted amount, I'll then see that I've overspent it. If I was to update this and put it as 19, you'll see it's now on budget. You can also set a percentage claim. Now the reason I like this is for things like bills. Let's say my internet bill is $30, um, but I really only use the internet for kind of 70% of or 50% of my time for work, which I have to do for accounting. So this is a kind of accounting thing. I can set it to 50% and then it will have a final expense claim amount, which has this formula that does it, so that back up in the main um, report, I can see my total expenses claimed and my total um, expenditure. So the brilliant thing about that is I'm able to just keep a complete track of all my finances, but then also actually do my accounting for my business at the same time. A place to drop um, receipts. So if you wanted to, you could use this system to gather absolutely everything. This links it to the balance report, planned expenses. That basically is saying um, the amount, the the amount of money that was um, either fixed or variable 
and then it just puts a zero in that formula if um, it's a one-off um, expense. And then that returns in the balance report um, everything that I planned for and then everything that was a one-off extra. So like you can kind of see your total spend, it's another way of kind of accounting for it. I can view by expense type, so if you want to go like see everything for your bills. Uh, and of course it would be very easy just to filter this by month and year if you wanted to see reports within it. Uh, this is literally a history of everything. So as you build up your year, um, this will just drop down in year order and in month order. I think we should now look at this area over here. I love this bit, creating and automating recurring budget items. First of all, I have a template button. If we go into configure, uh, we can see there's currently nothing in this. So let's set one up. Let's set up our monthly salary. Now, if I just dropped this one in, it would carry all the formatting that's there, that it's April and the current uh, year. You might prefer to have the financial year viewable. There it is, if you wanted it. So if I dropped that into there and regenerated it, it wouldn't work. So I've created a filtered view of the database in order to create the right things. And it's filtered so that basically none of those are filled in. So I just do it like this, income, let's do uh, salary. I'm gonna set the amount, there it is. They could be variable income sources. So for example, um, I might wanna just put in here, I know that I always get paid some ad cents. The amount is empty, because I don't know what it is. I'm gonna set it as ad cents. Oh, why don't we do it YouTube, and then it's in the template for people. YouTube, yeah, there we go. Now all we now need to do, it took a while to work out how to do this simply, is take those two, and just drop them in here. Now there's, you can see there's already something that, if you drop them at the bottom of the box, it means that when you generate, you don't get taken to the first item, it leaves a space above it. Good little notion trick, that one. Drop this one in underneath. I've created those. Let's say we move on to the next month. So by doing that, I would filter to May. I then want to generate the items, they turn up. Just delete the little space. And I just drop these in and you'll see it comes up as May and the financial year is shown. It really is as simple as that. Once you've created stuff, you can just click this every month and you're away. If you need to add something new, you just add it. If you wanted to change one of these, you would do the following. Open this up, open this up, take monthly salary back out, edit it, yeah, and put it back in. Really cool, I'm really pleased with that system. It works exactly the same with expenses, but there are two versions of expenses. To put in a new expense, let's invent one. I don't always get the same travel card, so I'm gonna leave the amount blank, because it's variable, but I'm gonna set a budget, pay up to the $80 one. If I have to get a more expensive one, I can put it in. Put in the expense type, travel, set the percentage of the claim. I'm gonna say it's 100%, so I can just leave it blank. If you wanna make it reduced, you just put in a percentage. It's currently nothing, because there's no amount in there, but you know, it was it's all set up. Why don't we say it's that? Great. You could do a fixed one. Council tax, we have to pay that here. The budget, don't need to set because it's fixed. It will automatically, with this one, just make the final amount, the fixed amount. No uh, percentage claim, I've got five rooms in my house, so te technically it's gonna be 20% of the house that I use for work, and this is bills, done. Exactly the same thing. If we open these up, works exactly the same way. We would move to the next month, generate, generate, like that. And then obviously I can have it in there ready and then once I know what my mobile uh, phone bill was, I can put it in. I was on budget this time. Or I can go, oh no, 23 pounds, I overspent. Well, get budgeting. No excuse now not to be on top of your money. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss the step-by-step -step build video for this template and more on simplifying productivity and creative life. It would be great if you left some comments. It would be amazing if you hit that like button. And I'll see you in the next video. Uh, what do you make of all that pepper? Hey? Yeah. Ooh, ooh.